Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, as-salamak rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, we have the agenda today, juz number two. If you know, it's very hard to give tafsir for 15 minutes to go for everything. So what I try to do is I try to sum her up. Why? Well, you know, the Quran has rights upon us. It will testify for us or against us. And what are some of these rights? Well, the first right is what? We have to believe it's what? The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not created. That's the first things first. Second, we need to recite and memorize some of it. Yes, we need to memorize some of it. What else? We need to read tafsir, right? We need to read and understand what we're reading. And then what? We ponder upon it. And then finally, we have to implement it. What's good if we keep reading and reading and reading and it never touches our heart? Right? So this is the first things first. So now when we study the Quran, we have to look at it as a macro approach and a micro approach. What do I mean? Well, first we take the surah and realize, is it Meccan or Medinan? Okay, so tonight, Surah Baqarah, just two. It's Surah Baqarah, Ayah 142, two, Ayah 252. Alhamdulillah, I have it pretty good in that 50, 50, a little more than 50% of the surah is about this. About what? About the Sharia, the legislation, explaining it. And that's what we'll talk about in a second, inshallah. So now we determine where is it, Mecca or Medina? It's Medina. It's the first surah revealed in Medina. The first two years after Hijri, most of the surah came down, but it was left open. It was left open throughout the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Now realize too, some of the scholars say it's the 87th surah revealed, some 86, give or take one. But ponder upon this, why is it placed second in the Quran? It's in the beginning. In the beginning. What's the difference, right? In the Medinan. And Meccan. Meccan, everybody says, oh, it's Akidah. And the, yes. But you know, it's also Akidah and Medina. <laughs> we never lose the Akidah. It's most important. But it's building the community. This is Surah Baqarah. Building the community. How? How? What do you mean? Well, when we look at the at, at a Surah, we should look at what? Look at the stories that are in it. Why some stories are in certain Surahs and not other Surahs. For example... What stories in here? I don't want to talk about much from yesterday because it's yesterday, but just real quickly, the story of what? Ibrahim building the Kaaba. Building. Right? Adam and Hawa. Right? The Khalifa. The leaders. Building. So now we say, okay, and what else do we look at with this surah? What words repeat often? Right? What words repeat a lot? Well, we see some type of knowledge in repeats a lot in Surah Baqarah. Because to build, you need knowledge. Right? What else is in there? What other words is said a lot in Surah Baqarah? Taqwa. Right? How can you build something without having taqwa? And now the, the Surah itself, Surah Baqarah, and you start to see how things happen and, and why. Why? Attitude. Right? You want to build with the right attitude. Look, we're going to start tonight with Ayah 142 with the changing of the Qibla and the attitude of it. And we'll talk about that in a second. But realize too, now we said what? 
We need to build. We need to build. What can we do to build? What should we do to build? Well, we need knowledge, right? We need taqwa, right? What else we need? What else is in here? Money, spending. We need to spend. We need to have the right attitude, like we said. So now first, tonight, like I said, we'll start with the changing of the Qibla. I just want to take a, a, one or two words from the changing of it and then speak about it. I at 142. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, the fools among the people will say, what has turned them from the Qibla to which they used to face the prayer? Say, to Allah belongs both the east and the west. He guides whom he wills to a straight path. And what's the word they use for fools? Right? Sufaha. A fool. You know what a fool is that they put here? Someone who's devoid of any intellect. Someone, you know, someone who's not even worth explaining the question to. You know, sometimes, like, you know, with, that's just a stupid question. It's not even worth answering. These are people like that who have no intellect. Look how harsh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling these people. Who? And who's in these people? Everyone. The mushriks, the yahud. The, the, um, the Munafiks, he includes them all in it. He's telling us in advance that what these people would say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in advance what they're going to say to who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These fools. Because we know the changing of the Qibla cha is the what? The changing of the God. No more. No more has come. Meaning what? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to fast... I mean, he used to pray facing Mecca, and then when he went to Medina, Mecca was on his back. Right? Because Medina is north of Mecca. So now when you're facing the place Jerusalem, you're facing north. Mecca's to your south. The Kaaba's south. So he had it in his heart, and he wanted to, to face Mecca. That was his home. And these people, the Quraysh, drove him out of his home. And we see here, we'll see through the sin. There's three different commands where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about the changing of the Qibla. Three times he mentions it. Why? Why three times? And that's what we're going to discuss a little bit now. The first time he mentions it, Verily we have seen the turning of you, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face towards the heaven. Surely we should turn you to the Qibla that should please you. So turn your face in the direction of al Masjid al-Haram. And whoever you people are turned, turn your faces in that direction. This is the first command. It's fulfilling what? It's fulfilling the Prophet's promise. It's fulfilling the Prophet's promise. This is the first command. Jazakallah. Now the second command in Ayah 149. It says, and who forever as you start, look forth, turn your face in the direction of al Masjid al Haram. This is indeed the truth. Look what the word they said. Lel, lel haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the lamb to emphasize the truth. So what is he saying here, the second? He's what? He's telling the Prophet Sallallahu this is the truth. There's no if, ands about it. This is what it's going to be, the changing of the God. And finally, the third command comes in Ayah 150. And from whoever you start forth, turn your face in the direction of al-Masjid al-Haram. Again, the third command. They say, why the third? Because it talks what was before it and what was after it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands us three times to face, the, to face what? The Qibla. This speaks the big significance. Like I said, this is the changing of the God. The Yahud knew this, that they was going to come eventually. That they were going to do this. And they were going to say this and try to disrupt the Prophet Wasallam and Islam. How did this help? Well, it helped for four reasons. How? Well, politically, right? How did it help politically? It made Arabia the center, right? It made it the center. How did it help militarily? Because look, when did it happen? The scholars say the changing of the Kipla happened in the second year after Hijri. There's two opinions. One, it happened in the month of Rajab, one in Shaban. Ibn Hajar Asqalani, he says it's in Rajab. This is a stronger opinion. And when did the Prophet Sallallahu then free Mecca, go into Mecca, the eighth year? So what? Six years later, it showed 
that he was coming. Right? Religiously, how did it help? Because why? The oneness of Allah, Tawheed. And historically, Ibrahim. The big change of this changing of the Qibla. So now, Allah explains why he did it. To test us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could tell us to face any direction. We hear and we obey. Right? So this is important to us. And this way we, we don't have to try to explain it. This is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So now as it continues, and then the people were worried that they faced before, before they found out to face Mecca, they were facing Jerusalem still. And they were worried, the Sahaba. And he said, what will happen to our deeds? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry what will happen to your deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he safeguards us in our iman. How? Two ways. He helps us during trials and tribulations, right? And our whims and desires. Because without him, we're nothing, we're weak. We have to realize this. This is the first how he saves, safeguards us. Look. And then what else? He endows us to make good deeds. He gives us that. And then once we make the good deeds, what happens when we continue to make good deeds? Our level of iman, what happens? It increases up and increases up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't worry. Allah will take care of his deen. You have to do your part. And what's my part? Quran, Sunnah, that's my part. That's it. Start with myself first, my wife, my children. This is where I start. And we have to each start like this, to change ourselves first. They asked Sheikh Albani this one time. They said, oh, Sheikh, this, is a, this will take too long. This will take a long time. He said, brother, you just need to start. Just start. So this is the thing to say, don't worry, the deen will come. So now this is the first part. And now from ayah 151 to tonight, the end of 252, it talks about the sharia. Laying down the foundation, setting the stage of the elements of the sharia. And how does it start? Well, from 151 it says, Similarly, we have sent among you a messenger from saying who the messenger is so we can follow him. And in 152, therefore remember me. Look, we sent you the messenger and remember Allah. You did this to after tonight, you thank Allah. Thank Allah that he gave us the opportunity to come here. And then finally, just to finish up, he says, in ayah 153, Ya amanu, right? He says, seek help in patience and in salah. And now we say, why, why patience first? I always say, you know, salah, why, why? Because there's three types of patience. Sabr, right? We always think of like having sabr when the calamity hits us. Oh, you need to have sabr, yes. But that's only one type of patience. And that is sabr when it, the calamity actually hits you. Realize that everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed upon us. And realize this, there's nothing bad that happens to us. There's nothing bad that happens to us. It's all khair, it's all good. Realize this, but we, we doubt ourselves, we doubt this, we complain, we this, we this. What happens if you don't have sabr? You, you have despair, you have anger, you, have, you change. You need to make this sabr. That's the one from the calamities. What are the two other types of sabr? Sabr is fulfilling the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Day in and day out. Wake up every morning and make your covenant with Allah. This is how you start your day. This is how you start your day. And what's the third one? Patience, sabr with the prohibitions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Staying away from what Allah has commanded us to stay away from. This is sabr, the three different types. So basically just to round it up today, I wanted to, to say, realize Surah Baqarah is the building block of the community. And you see how the story comes about building a community. For example, why is divorce mentioned here and divorce is mentioned in Surah Nisa? Alhamdulillah, I'll be here Thursday, so I'll probably mention Nisa. 
What is the difference of divorce in this Bakra and divorce in this Sa? Well, I'll tell you quickly. Divorce in Bakra is what? Setting the guidelines of divorce because we're building the community. What is Surah Nisa about? Well, I'll talk to you that about on Thursday to see. And jihad. Why is jihad different in here than in, in, in Tawbah? Right? Setting the foundation again. To fight those that fought you. In Islam, we don't fight people because of disbelief. Right? What do we fight people for? Because of their transgression. Because they transgressed against the Muslims. Because we want to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word for all. Because that is the justice system. Not democracy, not socialism, not communism, nothing but Islam. So I remind myself and foremost, my time is up. Again, forgive me if I said anything wrong, it's from my own shortcomings. And whatever I said was correct was from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aquli kali hala wa astaghfirullahi wa akum wa lasan inna lin sanalafi hus ila ladina amanu amilu soli hati wa tuwa sol bi haki